Hello, welcome to part two of Metro Prime Remastered. I'm going to try to play through the entire game. What is this? Hang on. Oh, okay. Sorry. Alright, so... You might remember I streamed Metroid Prime a while back using Dolphin Emulator and the Metroid Prime hack and all that, and then I went through a lot of trouble to get it working on the Steam Deck. Well, then Nintendo decides to do a remaster, which is fine. So, decided to start over. So this is my, this is part two, and I'm going to just keep playing until I beat it. I don't know how many parts it's going to be, but I am streaming today, obviously. I'm hoping to stream again tomorrow night, and then maybe again on, like, Tuesday or something. So we'll see. Looks like I do have plans for Sunday. <clears throat> Let's see here. Okay, so it looks like the stream is up and running, and Discord is now letting people know that I am streaming. Okay. Oh no, I hit something I shouldn't have hit. Okay, never mind. So here we go. I made some other changes to uh, my interface here and whatnot. So, and just a recap. As you can see, you can now play some Game Boy Advance and Game Boy games on here. Um, I got this baseball game because uh, I bought this digital. So I used the coins to buy this game, which was only a dollar. And then I did get Fire Emblem Engage. It is currently in the console. I just didn't start playing that yet. And still working on the Pokemon Scarlet uh, post-game content. And I played Cruise and Blast a little bit. This is a port of an arcade game, and it runs quite well. And if I ever beat Xenoblade Chronicles 2, then I will finally start playing 3. We'll see. Um, so I am open to requests. As long as it's a game that I actually like, though. So if you request something I don't like, I will not play it. But... On here, I've got some neat stuff. Um, oh yeah, Panzer Dragoon. How about that? So then, uh, I'm very excited about Pikmin 4. That's coming up, I think, July. Um, haven't played Splatoon 3 in a while. I want to go back and finish the single player and maybe do some more salmon runs and all that. Oh yeah, and I might get back to SMT5 at some point. Um, and then Tears of the Kingdom is coming up, so there you have it. That's my current Switch collection, not counting stuff that I didn't download. <clears throat> and I updated my icon, because that's one of my favorite new Pokemon, which is cool. Oh, there's my friend code, I guess, if people I know want to send me requests. Um... Let's get to it then. I do have the chat window open if anybody wants to chat. But if uh, I get spammed by robots, then I will not be happy with that at all. Don't do that. I also discovered that uh, OBS has some ways to like change the color, brightness, sharpness, stuff like that. So I made it a little bit sharper and increased the saturation a little bit. Um, and I also went ahead and swapped out Y and A. I was complaining about that last time. So now Y will shoot, A will turn into Morph Ball. Which you can do. Um, but then you gotta remember though that it applies it to everything. So now I gotta hit Y instead of A when I'm doing stuff on here. But if you just go over to change button mapping, that's what I did. I can save this as a preset for, oh, okay. yeah, you can save different presets. Okay, cool. So this will be my uh, Metroid preset, I guess. Cool. Not, not that I'll use it for other games, I, or maybe I will, we'll see. Right, so, but then B is still B, which is good. So let's get right into it. Um, 
Now, here's the extras menu. Now, as you do things, you unlock extras. And it says I've unlocked a bunch of stuff, so let's just check some of that out real quick. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, so Samus is, like, full anatomy and stuff. Oh, that's me. Oh, yeah, it's one of those guys. Oh, wow, that's, yeah. So you get concept art and stuff like that. That's pretty neat. Yeah, look at those creepy assholes. Biology Remastered. I only have one eye in the lock, but okay. Wait, what did I miss in here? Hang on. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, you, you can unlock some really interesting stuff here. Cool. Oh, the gunship, the suit. Oh, yeah, you have like 3D models and stuff. That's pretty neat. That's one of the machine gun turrets. Pirates, of course. I can zoom in. I look at these little creeps. Oh yeah, that's the first boss. Oh yeah, look. That's me. Oh yeah, I just killed him too. Okay. Him or her, whatever. I don't know. Oh, okay. Now I can listen to the music anytime I want. Oh, that's me. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty neat. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a remaster done right. I was hoping to get all three games in one collection. You know, like I said, if they charge 40 bucks for each one, that's $120. But if they're well done, then maybe it's worth it, right? Okay. And Nintendo has said that um, Tears of the Kingdom will be $70, but they're not planning on charging 70 for all upcoming games. They said it's a case-by-case -case basis, so we can see that Pikmin 4 is only going to be 60 and it really just comes down to demand, I guess. There's more demand for Zelda and Mario type games, I guess. <clears throat> so I made a mistake last time and I came back here without meaning to, which means now I gotta walk all the way back into Magmore to get into Fendrana Drifts. So. Let's just take a look at the map here. Yeah, I gotta go back to the Magmore Caverns. Can I... get through that door, though? I would hope so. And... of course we have Ridley. Ah! So, when Amiibos were new, I bought a whole bunch of them. And I opened some of them, didn't open others. And then one day I said, to hell with it, I'm just going to open all of them. And I did. And I had something like 15 or 20 of them. And most of them only worked in Smash Bros, unfortunately. But then one day I said, to hell with this, I don't want these anymore. And I ended up selling them all. But then one day I said, oh, well I really want that Ridley Amiibo. Now, there's no functionality in this game, but actually, there's probably no functionality in Dread either, now that I think about it. I don't know. So, no amiibos for this game. Alright. So, 
But man, these graphics are like freaking amazing. Like, this looks like it just came out. Ah! What is happening here? Aha, I got stuck in the water. You suck. Fucking die. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, I just hope I don't have any bandwidth issues. It's Friday night and all that, but... We'll see. No drop frames as of yet. Yeah, and it's fluctuating around 6,000 kilobytes per second, which I think is all Twitch can handle anyways. Okay, so no matter what button you have this map to, if you press and hold, she'll shoot three times before the charge starts. And I don't know if that's intentional. Kind of seems like an oversight to me. Yeah, I remember where things are sometimes. Yeah, my CPU usage is only around 35-40%, so... Yeah, it's like, unfortunately, you know, using the microphone on the webcam, you're going to hear that computer fan in the background. It can't be helped. Okay, so I need to go back to here. Okay. That shouldn't be too hard. Except that it's fucking hot in here, right? Ah, oh, God! No! No, get out of the lava! Oh, Jesus. Okay. And if you do make it into Magmore Caverns without the Varia suit, um, you will not be able to proceed. Oh, I lost a lot of health in there. Jeez. Ah! Alright, I'm gonna die. <laughs> now, I'm not sure, but it seems like... They are a little more generous with health and ammo pickups, or drops, rather. talked about this before, but there's an interesting lore entry from the Space Pirates where they tried to duplicate the Morph Ball technology and they have no idea how Samus does it. Right? They're just, they're totally stumped because all the test subjects end up getting just contorted. You know? They, they get their bones broken and everything. It's crazy. Some help, you bastard. No? Ah. Good enough. Oh, wait. Yeah. No, I. How did I get turned around? No, I, I didn't. Alright, never mind. Oh, alright. But, what is this... Hang on. What is this on the map here? Oh, it's above me. Huh. Yeah, there it is. Alright, can't get in there. Yeah, always look at the map here. And now, this is one of many rooms... Well, actually, no, one of a few rooms 
where you can use a super bomb. So anybody who played Super Metroid would walk into this room and instantly remember the entrance to Meridian. So. Alright, but actually, I'm curious, can you actually scan... Yeah, see, if you scan it, Bendizium. Bendizium means you need a super bomb. Sandstone means a regular ball bomb, and then there's something else that indicates super missile. Or regular missile. Okay. I can do in there, so I think I have to go across. Yeah. Alright. I don't need ammo, I need health. I tell you, this game was giving me the um, yellow healing items that give you 100 health. It was giving me those when I was at full, and now all I get are fucking missiles. Sinks when I get on it. I can't get up there yet because I do not have the double jump. Got it. Oh. Remember this? You watched my other streams? Yeah, you get your ass kicked in here. If you're not careful. Ah, I'm dead. <laughs> Alright, you know what? Let's hell with it. I'll just, I'm just gonna go for it. Ah, come on, not fair. Alright, so they didn't make any changes to the physics in this puzzle here. The ball sometimes still won't roll where you expect it to. There we go. You gotta do it just right. And no save states this time, right? Alright, see, this is what pisses me off, though. Sometimes the morph ball just doesn't go where it's supposed to go. See? Yeah. The only reason I kept trying is because I know it's an energy tank. And then I'd be back to full health. Okay. I always die at that part because I get greedy. And I just want to finish that stupid puzzle, but... Talon Overworld. It's like the collision detection is still a little bit off there. But now we know what happens when you die. You go back to the last manual save, just like the original, so... I can now confirm the game does not have any kind of alternate checkpoint system. And unfortunately, I now have to replay a couple sections, but oh well. What are you gonna do? Uh, no, no, screw these guys. And the thing with Metroid that does annoy me a little bit is that there's like no incentive to kill enemies, right? I mean, if you're low on health or missiles, then you may try to kill an enemy 
but there's also the risk versus reward. It's like you might end up losing more health and they may end up dropping nothing. So, on the one hand, the game doesn't force you to keep fighting enemies, but on the other hand, there isn't much of an incentive. You notice how the game kept giving me missiles, even though my health was extremely low. And then I was only getting the purple health drops. Sometimes that happens. So there still is an advantage to playing on an emulator, which is you can save states. But you're not going to get these graphics and all that. Ah, did it again. So yeah, it's a little weird, right? The collision detection on edges when in morph ball form is a little off. You have to get like completely on it or it doesn't count it. It's not like, you know, if you get close it'll roll upwards. No, if you're if you're not close enough, then it'll roll you back. Looks like Charge Beam does a little bit more damage than the Missile, which isn't surprising. down to 20 health and you can have full missiles and they'll still give you fucking missile drops. Oh wow. depends on what room you're in. Maybe this room is just designed to do that, you know? Yeah. So at most I'm getting purple health. Okay. Wow, what are you gonna do? Nothing uh, important in those messages, anyways. Alright. See if I can get it this time, but if my health gets low, I'm just gonna give up. Yeah, 
So if I'm too close, then sometimes she doesn't make it up. This is ridiculous. Yeah, see, I made it that time and they screwed me over. Alright, if the game's just content to keep screwing me on that, then I guess I'm just not gonna get it. That's ridiculous. Somebody didn't test that properly. Andrana Drips, that's how I say it. <clears throat> Alright. So I know there's a save room over here, so let's go find that. Forgot to scan that. Good. All right. Five missiles. Good job with the reflections, huh? That's cool. Yeah, this is all pretty neat.
Ah, crap. <sighs> yeah, I wonder when we can expect a remaster of Prime 2. Finally, be able to play Prime 3 without those god awful motion controls. I just think, though, if you fall off the edge here, then you got to do the whole thing all over again. Yeah, scan them over. At least I know what to do here this time. Ball boost.
Samus can ride the half pipe, all right. So I came all the way here just to get that, right? Yeah, because I still don't have the wave beam. So I think now I have to go back to Talon Overworld. Dang it! can't get up there. Even if I could, I can't open the door. Look who it is. That's a really neat cutscene right there. Cool. All right, I can't make the jump over that yet. Yeah, I can't get over there. Um. to go back here because I thought there was like a missile tank or something in here. get up there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Map indicates something here. Oops. Map indicates some type of thing there. 
see it. All right. Oh, see, look, there's a spider rail. Oh, that's what... Okay, so there's something over there, but I need the spider ball. Got it. Yeah, they can freeze you. Oh yeah, Visual Knight is with us, hi. Very cool. Metroid Prime Remastered. <laughs> now, do you mean the graphics of the game? Because it's a remaster. Maybe that was a joke. Okay. Or did you mean the settings in OBS? Oh, yeah. This just came out. That's why I was asking you on Discord if you saw the Nintendo Direct. This was a shadow drop, I guess. But I also adjusted some settings in OBS to make it a little sharper and darker. So there's not so much gamma. So because of the remaster, I decided to just start over in this version. So I'll, I'll never finish the other uh, Prime streams, I guess. No reason to. Alright, so now I gotta go... I got the half-pipe ball boost thing, so now I gotta go back. Okay. Seriously had to go. Man, that's a lot of backtracking, huh? Alright, because now I gotta go all the way back to Talon Overworld. Alright, but see, it makes sense now because when I came into here, I went that way, ended up back in the Overworld. It's like, well, gee, if, if you had gone this way first. Then I would have gotten that, gone there, done the whole half-pipe thing, and okay. So there's backtracking built into the game, but then there's backtracking when you're like me and you just don't remember where shit is. Nope. No, so, graphical improvements, some extras, better control scheme, so it's now like a twin-stick shooter. Um... And some other like accessibility options and whatnot, but still the same game. The level design and the layout of the game are all still the same. Yeah. And this puzzle, if anything, this puzzle seems harder. time it just right. And they did not update the checkpoint system, so if you were watching earlier when I tried to do this puzzle the first time, I died. 
and went all the way back to the last manual save. I guess I'm doing the higher one too late. See, it's not letting me up here. And even when it did, I ended up falling in the next spot. This is ridiculous. Yeah, see? Yeah. It's ridiculous. I, I swear they did something here. But sometimes she just doesn't make it up the ledges and stuff. You know? It's almost like the hitboxes and the art assets don't quite line up. Yeah. I just don't get it. I'm not getting the height that I need. But there's no other way to get up there, you know? I thought this would be faster than going through the um than going through the death animation but well no it's just the same way that it was in metroid one and two um i don't know what he just said um no so the way it works is you gotta you only get three bombs, and then you gotta time it just right to go up. But in the original Metroid, what you could do to, to actually to save time, if you had a turbo controller, you just would hold down B until you got the right pattern. <laughs> and that was faster than trying to guess it or get it yourself. But it's always been that way. You, you've always had to drop a bomb, then drop another one, then do the higher one, and then bounce up twice. And that puzzle wouldn't be so bad if they didn't put the fucking lava right underneath you, so... And they did it on purpose, of course. They put the lava there so that every time you screw it up, you fall in the lava. And then you eventually... Either you give up and don't get the power up, or you just keep doing it until you die. But I just think that maybe somebody didn't test this all the way, you know? Yeah. 
the, if you hit the bottom one too, you, you can't do either of them too early or too late. It's, it's perfect timing, but I just can't seem to get it. Yeah, you, and then so at least in Super Metroid, you got like the spring ball, and that would let you just jump while in ball form. But, yeah, I don't know, it's just weird. Yeah, see, even when I get enough height. She doesn't roll onto the platform. Alright. Got it that time. But see, now you gotta do it again. It's like... See? <laughs> you gotta do it twice. And it's perfect timing. And sometimes she just doesn't make it up the ledge. It's an energy tank, so at least I'll get my health back. But still, all right. Yeah. So that time I did the second bomb too early, or the last bomb too late. But even when I, even when I get the height, she doesn't do it. Worst puzzle ever. If the third bomb is too low, then you don't make it. But if it's too high, then you don't hit it at all. Yeah. Yeah, right. I was like, would it have killed them to just let you jump in ball form. See, if I could save states right now, I would save a state right after the first success, you know? Yeah. I just don't get it. It's like... It's not frame perfect, but... For us regular people, it is. A speedrunner would have got it in one try. The problem is, if I go into the next room at reduced health, then I'll just end up dying in there instead. That time, I completely fudged it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on the surface, Nintendo games are, like, easy games for kids. It's like, well, but not always. Yeah. see what takes longer. Okay, so it is quicker to just go through the death animation. The narrator is saying something different, but I can't catch it. Maybe he's just saying Ice Valley or something. 
I never knew the game had a narrator. Apparently, it was only in the Japanese and European versions. It's like, huh, how about that? Yeah, I remember uh, Star Fox 64 had some pretty, um, had some difficult ways to get alternate paths. Like right in the first level, you gotta fly through these, you gotta shoot these doors and go through them. And there's like five of them and then that gets you an alternate path. And then there's the later level, like you said, where you gotta keep hitting the, the uh, portals to go through the black hole or hyperspace or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get through the Saturn version of Symphony of the Night. I did try to play it, and it kind of sucked. Like, yeah, it, it let you play as um, Maria, and then there were a couple of extra rooms you could get into, I think. But then when they let you play as Maria in the PSP version, she was different. So I'm hitting the last one too late. Or too early, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. The problem is, I, I don't know what's up with my brain right now, because I can't even tell if I'm hitting it too early or too late. should have made it that time. I don't understand this at all. And I know if I don't get it now, I'm going to forget. But it's also not going to get any easier. I mean, when I have more health, sure, I'll have more tries. But if I can't do it on one try, I can't do it on any other. I'm completely missing the third bomb, or I'm not going high enough to get over the ledge. Uh, no, I'm using the wireless controller. Then again, maybe there's a delay when I'm, because I'm looking at the computer screen, too. Maybe I need to look at the TV. Hmm. I know, but what I keep talking about though that's what I keep saying like she just some, sometimes and you can see it here sometimes she just doesn't go over the ledge okay. that time she wasn't high enough but even when she's high enough sometimes she doesn't make it you have to get higher than what the object actually shows And you gotta be holding the left stick while she's going up, too. Yeah, so that time I missed it, and one more try, and then I gotta re reload again. Yeah, I don't know.
So uh, Ice Valley. Oh yeah, the narrator is saying Ice Valley. Right, hang on. I'm just gonna type Metroid Prime Remastered Broken Puzzle and see what comes up. Yeah, now one of the guys who worked on the original game says that they did something wrong with the doors in this. I don't know what he's talking about, but... Um, so, maybe this will make sense to you. Um, he's saying that the doors have the wrong alpha level applied making their appearance drastically different to the original yeah they sure they look different but are they still functional though i i don't have an issue walking through them so i mean i guess he's just upset that they don't look the same Yeah, I can't find any. Nobody's complaining online about it, so. I guess it's just me and my stupid fingers, huh? Okay. My 37 year old fingers can't play these games anymore. I'm in, I'm basically ancient in gamer years. The sad part is I am going to have to come back this way again. is every time you miss you end up in the lava and sometimes you get stuck in the lava and you lose a lot of health so that time i only lost 29 health but sometimes you get stuck down there a little bit longer yeah see it's just not quite getting over that ledge sometimes but even when i get up there i got to do it a second time and and that's the problem at least in the second attempt i don't end up in the lava You mean the control level? With the, uh, she's got to work on the computer and you got the gun turrets and you got the black glass that only enemies can shoot through? Yep. Um, so on the Xbox version, I beat every level on Secret Agent, half the levels on Double O. But on the N64 version, I pretty much. I only played a couple missions, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to beat the later missions when you have to aim at the gun turrets and stuff. Whew. 
Yeah, I wish I could save a state right here. You know, like I could in the emulator, but... One. I gotta count. One. One, two. I think it's about one and a half seconds. But I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, see, that time I almost made it, though. <laughs> Even though the third bomb was much lower. This is so broken. And the longer you're, like, the damage accelerates, so the longer you're down there, the worse it gets. Alright, I'm just gonna try one more time, then I gotta give up, because nobody wants to watch me do this for another hour. <laughs> it's, it's a broken puzzle, I don't know. You need, like, perfect timing, but it's... Obviously different from the original game, because if you watched my stream for the original, I was eventually able to get that. So now I've got to go all the way back over there again, so I can go to the two spots where i got to use the, the half-pipes. All this effort just to get that ball boost, you know? I would love to play like a randomizer, but I don't even know how you would do it, you know? hit you, you asshole. Okay, but how do I go back now? Oh, I gotta go through there. Okay. Alright, now I'm gonna get killed by this stupid asshole. And he's gotta eat the bomb. It's like the Dongo from Zelda. But this is what I was just talking about before, like... In the earlier parts of the game, it looked like I was getting more health drops and better health drops. Like the yellow ones instead of the purple ones, but now... It's like, no matter how low my health gets, they just keep giving me missiles instead of health. And the most I'm getting now is, is the purples. It doesn't make any sense. You'd, you'd think that the uh, item drops would be dependent on how much you actually have. But... Nothing, so... I tell you, there's certain circumstances... Oh, never mind, hang on. Certain circumstances where the game simply will not give you health drops no matter how badly you need them. Or it's as if there's something in the programming code where it just decides to screw you over, you know. Hard to say. Yeah. I'm just I'm not really sure how the drops work in this game. It could just be totally random.
But you notice that in a lot of old NES games that would happen sometimes when your health was really low. They would just keep giving you ammo or nothing. They used to happen a lot in some games. It, okay. This is what the game does. Is eventually, if, if you don't go fast enough, eventually the game will be like, Hey, dummy, go here. And you can turn that off, but I need it, because I forget things. Um, I can't see. Oh. Yes. Konami games. Exactly. Well, in Castlevania, remember, you'd get, like, there's an item that kills everything on the screen, and sometimes you only get it when there's one enemy. <laughs> surprised that they put these assholes here now. See, now, in contrast, though, Zelda 2, I guess, you could count it out, and it's like after a certain number of kills, you'd get the pea bag or the blue bottle. So that was something you could kind of manipulate in that game. Alright. Now we're going somewhere. Oh, you know what? Now I remember. Now I get the double jump, right? Right. Oh, okay, now I remember. You gotta get the ball boost to get the double jump, and then you gotta go back to Fendrana Drifts again. Space jump boots. All right. At least this makes the game a little easier, though. There we go. It's not going to help me with that puzzle, but... So talk about backtracking, now I've got to go all the way back there, but actually, there is another half-pipe room. Hang on. Let me see if I can just knock that out of the way now. Yeah, I was hoping to get through this faster. Um, than I did before. Yeah, see, look, then they give me a red one when I'm at full. That's what they do. I swear, there's times when it definitely seems like the developers are just being complete trolls.
Yeah, Metroid Prime 2 had fast travel, but it was very late in the game. And you could only go between specific rooms. They had to have the, the light beam in them. Let's go in here, because I know I can do something in here. It might just be a missile tank, though. Yeah, see, I knew I could do it here, but I don't have the spider ball. I think this is just a missile tank, yep. Yeah, see? Can't do anything there, okay. You know, it's kind of surprising, right, that that game didn't get a remaster. Yeah, Mega Man Legends. <clears throat> at one point, or it might still be like this, but at one point a physical copy was like $200. And then you could just buy it digital for like 10 you know, on PlayStation. Another purple door. Okay. Alright, so the way this works is you gotta get... You gotta get ball boost to get double jump, and you gotta get double jump to get wave beam. I'm gonna go this way instead. Because maybe there's some other spots I can get to with my double jump now. Oh, right, I can't get up. Never mind. Even if you can get up there, the door's not functional, is it? Good old can only be opened from the other side. Don't you just love that shit? Grappling hook for that one. I hate the grappling hook. Well, I shouldn't say that. What, what I mean is that... See, the grappling hook always annoys me because you get it so late in the game. and there, Which means there are so many spots where you know that you need it, but... 
You just can't quite get over there. Same thing happens in the Super Metroid. There's just so many spots where you need the grappling hook, and then you finally get it, and then you're like mad at it, because you're like, I could have used you like 10 hours ago. Somebody stole your N64 copy of Mega Man Legends. That sucks. Yeah, I played Sonic Adventure on PS3. I played that version of it, and I got stuck right in the beginning, and I felt like a moron. Like, I could not figure out what to do in that fucking game. Oh, I can't do anything without spider balls here. Oh yeah, the water's clean, see? Oh, see, I still can't get through here, though. Jeez. Went the wrong way again. I was trying to get down here, and I went the wrong way. What the hell? But I can't get through here anyways without the grappling hook. I gotta go back and finish Sonic Frontiers one of these days. I really liked that game, but I kind of just ran out of steam. You know? I got to, like, the third island, and it's like, oh, okay, I've got to do this again. Alright. So now what? Now I'm gonna go through the sun room up there. Okay. Man, imagine how easy this room would have been if I had double jump to begin with. Ah. Did they seriously put something there to stop me from doing that? What the hell? Is that why that branch is there? Ah, oh, never mind. Alright. I did it. Okay. Right? I, I forgot about this, so... Yeah. So this is classic Metroid right here. Blocking your path with new obstacles, yep. So... There's no way to avoid that backtracking, there's no way to go to the other part of Magmore Caverns to see if you can use your double jump. Nope. You are supposed to go... Um, yeah, you know what? Fuck this. Ready? So, what's supposed to happen is you get the ball boost, then you get the double jump, then you immediately go back to Magmore Caverns and Fendrana Drifts the other way. because you still need the grappling hook and wave beam to go to the other paths and the spider ball. So... 
All right, now you know. There's no way to eliminate the backtracking. There's no way to go a different way to collect additional items. No, there is a specific path you have to go. Talon Overworld. Yeah, seriously. That's what I'm saying. It's like all I got was this fucking missile tank, so that's fine. Now we go all the way back to here. And I gotta go back to Magmore Caverns. Yeah, I prefer Metroidvania games that are RPGs. Because then, even if you go the wrong way or get lost, you're still collecting XP from fighting enemies. And, and gold, too, you know. Alright. Now what? Not going to Chazo Ruins, we're going to Magmore Caverns. So, that's the door. Right there. Right. Oh, it's 10 o'clock already. Alright. And you can't get up there until you get the grappling hook. Not that it matters because that door is a red door. You need plasma beam anyways. Uh... can't go there because I don't have spider ball. So now I gotta go back in here and now there's another door I can open near the top but there's also other stuff I can do in the drifts. I did it again. I always do this. I get too close to the edge and then she falls in.
Okay. Artifacts, I need. Okay, I need that. Cool. Anything else in this room? No. That's it. Okay. That's it. That was the only reason to come up here. It was just to grab that. I knew there was something up here, but I didn't think it was just going to be an artifact. I totally forgot. And that's the thing, I was streaming the original game back in back in uh, November and then again recently, and you'd think I would remember this stuff, but... Yeah, Marathon was Bungie before they made Halo. And it, yeah, it definitely could have had an influence on this. Or...
uh, boss fight, right? And I didn't save. Ugh. Oh, it's just the little ones, okay. is you want them to use their breath attack and then shoot missiles into the wall. Okay. The boss, but they don't show a health bar, so. Oh. Wave beam. Nice of them to give me the better health power up. Okay, so now I've got to hold the um, R button. If I hold R and hit the button, that's how I push by. Which, okay, or guns rather. That's helpful.
I gotta melt that with the plasma beam to get an artifact. Here to open that purple door. Now we gotta save. <laughs> no way I'm not saving this time. Place faster. Ah, oh, that's not even the right way anyway. Right. I want to get in there. Okay. Now that I have double jump and wave beam, I can go here. I still gotta go the right way though. That is the you did something right sound. On there. Okay.
And that is the hurry up sound. Shadow Pirate. Yeah, see, and that one fires twice when you hold the button. Oh, map data. Don't mind if I do. Stop when I get to the next save room. Yeah, the game world is pretty big. Especially for its time, I mean, nowadays, yeah, like, of course it's not as big as Skyrim or Witcher 3 or whatever, but it's a pretty big world for its time, and a lot of backtracking that just artificially elongates it a little more. I mean, on a first playthrough, it could easily take you 15 or 20 hours to get through this game. So it was much longer than Super Metroid. That game was only 7 hours, even if you didn't really know what you were doing. Recording to the
definitely. Now, the original Metroid um, was pretty big, but there was just a lot of dead ends, too. And a lot of just extra missile tanks that you probably could get by without. Um, original Metroid just seemed huge because there was no map. And it, it was like a roguelike. You, you kept dying and you had to keep using passwords. And then Prime 2 has a decent sized world, but there's two dimensions as well. So that game is pretty long and it feels bigger than it is because it's two versions of each room. Yeah, you had to have Nintendo power back in the day. Do you ever wonder if they made the games like really cryptic on purpose so that you have to buy Nintendo power? And the kids today, they don't know what it was like to not have internet, you know? You had to buy Nintendo Power, or you had to hope that a kid at school figured it out first and they could tell you what to do. Yeah. Ah! Damn, pirates. See, this is why we can't have nice things, because space pirates. The Metroids could have been a source of endless energy, but no. Space pirates. And after they discover the Phazon here, they end up bringing it to other planets too, because that's just what they do. Yeah, right? You'd go to like electronics boutique or Funko Land or whatever and yeah I, when they weren't looking you would be like oh I, I, I'm i not buying this strategy guide I, ju I just want to check one thing <laughs> it's like it's not a library yep Yeah, there's, like, no reason to even buy strategy guides anymore, because even going back to, like, even going back ten years ago, like, it was still worthwhile to get a strategy guide, but not so much anymore. Like, I got the Dark Souls 2 hardcover strategy guide, ended up selling it because Scholar of the First Sin changed enemy and item placements, and then, uh, yeah, I had a few other nice hardcover strategy guides that were still somewhat useful. But now it's like you can just look everything up on your phone. Yeah. The spinny thing in Carnival Night Zone in Sonic 3, yeah. You know, we talked about this before, so I brute forced it by using a turbo controller and just holding down the jump button and then Sonic would either fall through it or he would get stuck in the wall. And I would get soft locked or, or have to wait for him to die. Yeah. But you were saying you had another way of getting through that, like with Game Genie or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you had to get all the emeralds before getting to that level. Okay. And then you Super Sonic could get through it somehow.
Yeah, even now when I get a new game, I don't... I don't look anything up unless I get really stuck. Like, with Elden Ring, I don't think I looked up anything um, until after I beat it. And then I just looked up where some of the bonus post-game content was and where extra bosses were. That That's what it was. Like, I used the internet to find, like, to get achievements and find, like, hidden stuff that I might have missed. But I still like to play through the whole game without spoiling anything. So I always liked this part of the game because you look at all these planets and it made me wonder if, like, you were supposed to go to these other planets in later games, that's all, right? So Talon 4 is where we are now. And then there's Zevis. And then there's Planet Billium. So I always wondered if, yeah, you would eventually go to those other planets in later games. But who knows? And then, but there's no mention of the planet from Prime 2, though. So. so now what do I do? So I guess on my next stream, maybe I'll get caught up to where I was in the original game. I can only hope. Ah! I always wish that there were more first-person games that weren't just pure shooters, you know? I wish there were more games like more games like this and Mirror's Edge on the market, you know, that are platformers first and shooters or combat games second. I made it. Pretty sure this is a save room. Final Fantasy Metroidvania Power Rangers like game that is going to Planet Planet. Yeah, that would be cool. Although that's kind of what Starfield is going to be, right? Um, and I'm one of those unfortunate people who pre-ordered No Man's Sky and I got the special edition and everything and then I started playing it. I'm like, this isn't really what I was expecting, so... No Man's Sky was cool because you could just, any time, you could just get in your ship and fly into the atmosphere or go to any planet. But it didn't have, like, a good story holding it together, and some of the, like, a lot of the planets all kind of looked the same. The graphics were terrible. Performance sucked. Even with all the updates, it's still not really something I want to continue playing. Super Missile. Nice one. And then Metroid Prime 3 did allow you to explore multiple planets, but um, I didn't get very far into that game, so I don't know how many planets there actually are. But yeah, no, I'd, I'd like something like that. I'd like a Metroidvania RPG that lets you kind of go more places. And, you know, like still being an RPG and all that. Yeah, Cyberpunk, I pre-ordered, and I played it on the Series S, though, and it turns out that was the most stable version. So it was 1440p, and it was 30 FPS, but man, like, it didn't really crash that much. It was a steady 30 FPS, is what I'll say. I mean, now Cyberpunk has totally been 
updated and they redid the perks at one point and yeah it's absolutely worth playing now on a series x or ps5 but that was actually a pretty fun rpg what i liked about cyberpunk is that you could just you could just equip like a katana and just go around slicing people up and i liked how all of these buildings you walk by, or maybe not all of them, but most of the buildings, you can actually enter them and there's items and enemies and stuff. You know, it's not like other open world games where you can't go into any of the buildings. Alright, well it's 1041. Hmm. Um, Alright, let me see how far I can get into this next part. Well, Cyberpunk originally comes from um, the Neuromancer, the science fiction novel, and that's also what inspired um, Shadowrun. But yeah, also Blade Runner is, you know, uh, Cyberpunk as well, I guess. I didn't like um, the Deus Ex games that I played. Because I tried playing... Um, he, there was... Well, there was Mankind Divided, and then there was... Um, the other one. Yeah, I only played the two newest Deus Ex games, and I didn't like either one. There was Human Revolution and Mankind Divided. <laughs> Duke Nukem Forever, oh boy. Yeah, that was a prime example of feature free, right? And they just, it took them so long to work on it, they kept trying to implement new features from other games. Now, one thing that would make Metroid better, I think, is if, like, your guns could get more powerful, like... You get more powerful guns, but I mean, I want each gun to get more powerful. It'd be great if there was an extra power-up that would increase your attack power with all guns. And Axiom Verge did that, you know? Axiom Verge lets you upgrade the size and damage of all your guns. The size of the bullets. So I think next month I may play through, um, what can I call it, um, I may play through Axiom Verge 2 again next month. Now, the only thing with this game is I kind of wish they had waited until the next console to do this. So it could have been like 4K and stuff. But at this point I'm really hoping that the next Nintendo console is backwards compatible and enhances old games. Similar to what Sony and Microsoft did, you know. That's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see something like, yeah, like with the PS5 and Series X that can enhance... Xbox One and PS4 games. That's what I want to see. Oh. Made in sorcery in VR. I didn't hear about that.
Yeah, I love how Metroid comes so close to being a horror game in, in many instances. Well, here's the thing. Switch has been on the market for six years now. They just added Game Boy, Game Boy Advance games. It's like, but at this point, they still don't have all of the games that were already available on the Wii Shop channel, Wii U, 3DS, etc. I forgot that he did that. Oh, God. I forgot that that little bastard popped out of there like that. But now here comes the rest of them. Oh, God. Pain in the throat. Okay. Yeah. I gotta tell you, though, um, in the original Metroid, the first time I made it into Torian, the Metroids, like, freaked me out. I was, like, afraid of them. I was just like, what the fuck are those things? Now, the last time I played the original Metroid, I was able to kill just Kraid and freeze the uh, flying enemy guy so I could get into Torian. And I was able to still beat it with limited missiles and no various suit, I think. That's the only requirement to beat Metroid, is you need the Ice Beam. Well, actually, if you go in there without the Ice Beam, you just have to not get hit by any of the Metroids, so... Strike that, yeah, you don't, um... It's like, you only have to kill, like, one of the bosses to be able to beat the game. And it's gonna end up being Kraid, because he's faster to get to than Ridley. What? Sonic Origins Plus? What? What is that all about? I really think Sonic Origins should have just had all of them. All of them from Master System, Game Gear, Genesis, you know, Spinball, 3D Blast. They should have all just been in there. Oh, okay. So Sonic Origins is getting an update that's supposed to add more games. Cool. Yeah, but maybe those Sonic games will show up on the Switch app now, you know? Sonic Advance. Alright. I think I got everything in here. See that? Did I kill that one or did he disappear into the wall? What the hell happened? Oh. Or they can jump? What the hell? New computer screen for gaming. Yeah, I don't know, man, because I'm still using an Acer monitor, 1440p, 144 hertz, IPS display, all that, a uh, 27 inch. I'm still using the same one that I bought in like 2014, 2015. So I'm probably not the best guy to ask. Yeah, um, my monitor supports um, FreeSync Premium and all that. But I think G-Sync and FreeSync are kind of the same thing now. I think they, every screen has both of those. So I don't know if... 
No, actually, no. My my computer monitor does support it. So this was a five hundred dollar monitor that I bought. Um, sorry, what happens when I do this? Yeah, see. So this is an Acer twenty seven inch um fourteen forty p and all that variable refresh rate. And but here's the thing though, if you want to get a monitor that's like four K, one hundred twenty hertz. All the extra bells and whistles, it's more than a TV. It's like $600, $700. Okay. Yeah, see, my monitor doesn't have HDR. That, that was the sacrifice I made, I guess. I went for the higher refresh rate at 1440p. Yeah, so mine doesn't have HDR. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um... I would say, you know, try to find something that has everything, but prepare to spend 600 or 700 bucks. That's why I haven't upgraded this monitor. Plus, my graphics card isn't really powerful enough for 4K anyways. So anytime I want to attempt to do 4K gaming, I just, you know, connect to the TV. Because they're right next to each other. Yeah, if I was to get something any bigger, I'd have to get a new desk. So 27 is as high as I'm going to go. One more, and then the Metroids come out and the lights go off. I was like 15 or 16 when I first played this. Um, this part scared me. <laughs> oh yeah, I have uh, Mackie studio monitors, yeah. But I've had Klipsch before. This part is freaking scary, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, I want to say the first time I played this game, I died in this room. Because, like, I couldn't figure out what to do. I was like, why won't that door open? Yeah, every see? Look how dark it is. Once you figure out, okay, I gotta put on the visor, and then I gotta shoot the things to get the door open. Yeah. This is, yeah, I'm saying, like, I love when Metroid gets very close to just being a full-on horror game. Yeah, and then look, and then the fucking creepy-ass Metroids break out of... Ah! I told you, man, this, this game was inspired by the uh, Alien movies. Ridley is named after Ridley Scott, I want to say. And the word Metroid is a combination of Metro and Android. And that's why the game is set up the way it is. So Android as in that's what Samus looks like, and Metro just the way that you traverse between worlds and stuff. Oh yeah, maybe. I don't know much about Geiger, but I did play Scorn and I hated it. The artwork was the only cool thing about it. Beyond that, it was a very stupid game.
Eat super missile. Bitch. You get these assholes. I don't need health, I need missiles. They never give me what I need in this freaking game. I did not play high on life, no. Yeah. Um, I gotta get back up there without getting eaten by Metroids. Dang it. What is happening here? No more missiles. Oh, I'm... Yeah, notice how I'm completely out of missiles, and do I get more missiles? No, of course not. It's like sometimes I really think the developers are trolls. I gotta get the fuck out of here before they kill me. Fucking die. <laughs> no, no. No, I clean, I clean. No, Miss Apita. No. 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 No, Monsieur, no. No, no, no. No, Monsieur. No. Alright. Now I can't fucking see anything. Am I supposed to be able to do this right now, or am I supposed to turn the lights back on? Do not know. Hooray, I did it. Now I can fall off. Yeah, you have to use this goddamn visor. Go back up. Alright, so at the next save point, I will stop. But I gotta get out of here without dying first. So, first time playing the game, it took me two or three tries to get through this area. This is, uh, you know, 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I remember I had a friend who let me borrow this, and then I let him borrow Resident Evil Zero. You have to fix a friend's motorcycle? You know how to fix motorcycles? That's cool. Bluetooth installed on a motorcycle, okay. Cool. But, but how does...
Oh, okay. Monster person, alright. Hey, look. Bluetooth in a motorcycle? Like, for what, though? Like, to play music? To talk on the phone? How can you hear people? Okay. Zen and the art of Bluetooth maintenance. Bluetooth motorcycle maintenance. And yeah, th that would be a good uh, Wheel of Fortune answer, huh? Oh, okay. Oh, so he's so he's gonna have like a HUD inside his helmet. Save room is, is right there. How do I get over there? Ah! No, I'm not gonna risk it. I have to save now. Phew. What would Jesus do with the brains? Oh, freaking. I don't know. Mirrors on the tinted visor. Oh, okay. Neato. Okay, so, save, phew. <laughs> yeah, turn brain juice on the wine, excellent. Yeah, you see, because what happens is, in Other M, you find out that the, um, there's a research station where they had Metroids and they weren't supposed to. And then they created Metroids that were resistant to cold, so you couldn't freeze them and shoot them with five missiles. Yeah, that game was kind of weird. They were able to get some of the uh, DNA off of Samus' suit or something. Yeah, that was a weird game. It supposedly took place right after Super Metroid. I wonder if they'll remaster that one. Probably not. I think they just want to pretend it never happened. All right, so there we have it. Um, done with that for today. Let's see, and I'm going to go back and change my presets here. So, or, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, oh, so you gotta hit A now, okay. Yeah, so, here's what I'm gonna do. Oh, see, I like how GoldenEye is the only N64 game on here, or actually the only virtual console game where you can put it in 16 by 9 and like, get rid of the damn margins. Let's see. So, yeah, I, I beat it on Xbox. I didn't get that far in, in here. This is just like a direct port of the ROM. Whereas on Xbox, at least there's some upscaling and texture filtering and all that. So I was going to say, what you can do here... I had this set up where... You set it to... Um, one of these. Hang on, let me see what this does. Yeah, so what you can do is... 
um... But you can also put that on. Yeah, see, here's the thing. Right now, left stick is to look around, right stick is to move, right? And then the shoot button is mapped to A. Yeah, and then aiming is the left button. Okay. So what happens if I go here? Yeah, th this is... Right, you don't want that. Okay. So what, here's what you want to do for this game, in my opinion. You want to set this to 1.4 good night, right? Then what you want to do is just... Let's see. Right, then what you want to do is just reverse the sticks. Right? Then I want to map um, A to right trigger. Or ZR. Right, but then I gotta... Then I gotta remember that, right? Oh, Nintendo. Because God forbid you just let us ma remap the buttons from within the app the same way you already implemented on the Wii U. Alright, so that's my golden eye mapping. So let's see what that does for me. Yeah, see now, left stick is move, right stick is look around, left trigger is aim, right trigger is shoot. That's not perfect, but it's an improvement. See? Yeah, no, Wii U was a great console that just it took a while for it to get going, and it had some great games for it, but ultimately, yeah, it was a, just a marketing issue. The only thing is it's a pain in the ass to aim in this version, that's what it is. But the problem is that when you're aiming, you have to hold the stick in place. And see, it's a little jittery. On Xbox version, it just... The whole thing just stays where you put it. And it moves with your person. <laughs> Wii 2 or Super Wii? Yeah, that was a problem. Like, when I got the Wii U, a lot of people were asking me, they're like, well, what is that? Is that... How is that different from the Wii? I don't understand. I said, well, it's a brand new console. They're like, oh. Okay. So yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to beat half the levels in this game. And the changes that I made have... It seems like it disabled um, auto-aim now. Or maybe it's because I'm on double-O agent. That's probably what it is. Yeah, that's what they... So, where is this guy going? You see how the auto-aim is a little bit different on double-O agent, I think. Yep. Agreed. Alright. So, yeah, I was just showing people my uh, control scheme for this game, and... Yeah. 
And what I think is, um, I think on higher difficulties, enemies don't become more accurate. I think um, Bond's uh, hitbox is just bigger on the higher difficulties. Because enemy behavior, enemy behavior looks about the same, but more bullets hit me. So I think it's just a bigger hitbox on the character here. So. And this asshole's gonna go for the alarm. Nope. And then I can use the two buttons to switch between weapons, so that's good. And we were talking before about how you kind of had to just figure stuff out on your own. Well, you had to figure out somehow. Uh, of course, if you read the briefings in the beginning, then like Q and Money Penny might give you some advice. But um, you got to equip the modem and throw it at the computer there. Yeah. Yeah, you had to read the briefings. Now, here's the thing, though. In the, um, the silo level, I couldn't figure out where I was supposed to put those plastic charge things, you know? I didn't know which rooms or which spot you were supposed to actually put them in. I, that, that I had to look up online. The, the statue level, that's, yeah, that's tricky. Especially trying to get the cheat for that level, that was a pain in the ass. You gotta download data from that mainframe. But this version of the game is so fucking hard just because of just trying to aim and shit. So. Yeah, so on Xbox, I was able to unlock invincibility. See, what happens is if you don't kill these guys, then they will follow you when you leave the bathroom. So you gotta take them out. And then you just head on over here. This guy. Okay. All right, good. Yeah, you need this key card here, right? So I'm on secret agent, and you can clearly see the difference with the uh, auto aim. I needed the key card to get into here. Because then you gotta hit this. Sometimes, like, Sometimes they'll come in and they'll shoot that computer. And if they do that, you're soft locked and you gotta stop. Oh. 
Oh, yeah, and then sometimes the goddamn scientists, man, they will walk right in front of you while you're trying to shoot somebody. And this isn't really like a stealth game, you know? Like, there's cameras and alarm systems, you have silenced weapons, but it seems like enemies are just alerted to your presence. So here's the thing, this guy, Dr. Doak, he can show up in seven different places. Yeah. Dr. Doak can show up in seven different spots. Um, now what's cool though is if you go that way and you shoot those trash cans, then poison comes out. And you fail the mission. Well, you don't fail the mission, he just slowly gets poisoned to death. But after you unlock invincibility, he just won't die from the poison. You have to make it and put out of the level. Crazy. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to beat this game on uh, this version of horrible aiming controls. So if you're trying to get invincibility on double O agent, you're going to want to just keep reloading until Dr. Doke shows up here. So what you do is you go here as fast as humanly possible, and if he's not here, then you just reload. But he can also show up over here, I think. Yeah, so on double O agent, you and secret agent and double O agent, you have to actually get the decoder from him to open the door. So now if you can beat the game on agent, then you'll unlock all the characters in um multiplayer. Now get away from their Trevelon traitor. Yep, he's Janice. There. And it took 3 minutes 57 seconds. So, I'm gonna do this already. Oh, right, so I can't even do double O agent until I beat... Okay. So another thing is, when you beat the game, you can try any level on any difficulty, I think. So... So on double O agent... I was able to beat it in like 1.45, and I unlocked invincibility. Um, you have to go as fast as humanly possible, and you gotta keep reloading until Dr. Doke shows up in the room just before the bottle room. So, there you have it. Alright, and now I have to go back and change the controls again. Like, at least they allow you to do this, but really, like, yeah, yeah, and the other thing is, like, I really wish they offered, um, 16 by 9 in here, because here's the other thing that annoys the hell out of me. Well, with all of the virtual apps, but especially these ones, it's like, now, you look how small it is. So, so it's like they're already making it smaller. No option to go 16 by 9 or stretch it. You got the stupid margins. Um, and then you go over here and it's like display with small screen. So you can make it smaller. Why would I want to make it even smaller? Why? Why, Nintendo? Why? Why? See? Look. Why would I want to play it like this? It's even smaller. I want it bigger.
Yeah, so each one of these apps should have its own remapping option. Just like the Wii U already has. So don't tell me you don't know how to do it. You already did it on the Wii U. So yeah, then look, look how small it is. I challenge you to Game Boy Tetris. <laughs> but see, this has the same thing, though. You go to, to options here. Although this is cool because you can get you can get pea green if you want, pea soup. Look at that. But yeah, display with small screen. Why would I want the screen to be even smaller? Oh, and you can get the scan lines. So are you ready for this? Want to see how shitty this is? Look at this. Yes, kids, this is what it actually looked like back in the day. Yep, I had a friend who had this. We both had it and we played with the link cable. It was awesome. But my, my friend had the uh, magnifying glass thing with the flashlight on it, too, so you could always see. Oh, why did I put that there? Uh, I'm making some really dumb mistakes here, but yeah. So, there you go. This is how we played Tetris back in the day. And you don't even know, like, how awesome this was, right? Game Boy had horrible graphics and we didn't care because we got to play games on the go. Hellbent on not giving me that Tetrino, huh? Yeah, you, you know what piece I'm waiting for, and they won't fucking give it to me. <laughs> Jeez. How long before I get another one? Oh, okay. Good. The kids today, man, they don't even know what it was like playing fucking... Look at this! Look how shitty this is! It's awful! <laughs> it's fucking terrible! Alright. Alright, now it's 11.30 and it's way past my bedtime. Sort of. I don't know. When you're old like me, you get tired at like 10 o'clock. It's horrible. I used to stay up all night. Anyways, thanks to Visual Knight for jumping in and chatting. Yeah. Yeah, I have an appreciation for the old games and the uh, old technologies. So... Alright, so today's Friday, so I might do Metroid again tomorrow night. Um, that's the plan anyways. We'll see what happens. Sunday, I'm going to my parents' house. Um, may or may not be watching the Super Bowl with them. Or I might stay home. I don't even like football. I don't even care. Um, and I don't know if we're doing shenanigans Sunday night. I think we are. I don't see why not, but... So there's a good chance I'll be streaming tomorrow and then probably not again until Tuesday. Um, so anyways, good night. See ya.